more than a week after Sudanese refugees were targeted by vandals. We've learned that the FBI has been talking to the victims. The two men had their tires deflated and unwelcoming messages scrawled all over their cars. The case has received a lot of attention on social media, some accusing the victims of vandalizing their own cars for sympathy and money. KTV 11 Jackie Slater takes a closer look at what may have happened that night. Jackie. Emily, Alexis, authorities have said this cannot be classified as a hate crime. It lacks some of the specifics needed to fall into that category. And without permanent damage to the cars, it can only be called vehicle tampering, a misdemeanor in the eyes of the law. But what is clear is it's a disturbing case that has left the victims fearing for their safety. So are you concerned now for your safety? Yes. I'm very concerned about that. That was Mohammed Hano on March 29th, the day he woke up to find his car covered with messages telling him to leave Alaska and go home. Now his message to the person or people who did this, Alaska is home. This community brought me to live in, in peace and love to make a good life or better life. More than a week later, no arrests have been made, but we asked retired APD detective Glenn Klinkhart to help us examine the case. One person came home at 1130. He said he was home around 11. We came up with a timeline of events. We at least have a window of whoever did this had to be in the area between 1 o'clock in the morning and about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. And Klinkhart examined footage recorded the day of the crime. Well, leave is written um, actually quite well. It's, it's legible. Um, and it appears it was likely written first. Some of our letters aren't properly formed. Correct. You know, oot instead of out. I suspect that uh, as somebody went along, they had to, they felt for some, re some reason to speed up. The suspect used a washable marker delivering their message without causing permanent damage. You go to vandalism, this isn't what you see. This is really unusual. We stopped in a store close to the crime scene and found washable markers on the shelves. If anybody there remembers anybody come in on that Saturday to buy multiple one or more of these things? That's just way too far back. Okay. Then compared them to the marker it's used on the cars. It's a little darker. Yeah. Yep. Klinkhart looked at three possible theories. One, the victims committed the crimes themselves. Looking at body language, looking at the things, how he said things, I do feel that uh, Muhammad himself is fearful. And he seems, at this point, everything that I see, I, I feel that he is being being honest with what he what he says and what he feels. Friend and mentor Debbie Bach agrees. They stay home, they they work two jobs, and they um, just do everything they can to get it right. They're on the best behavior because their dream is they're going to become an American citizen, and they knew if they do anything to mess that up. It might not happen. The second theory is an unknown person. There's somebody who's out and sees, or there's something that draws them to say, hey, I don't like these people, and here's why. This, this would be the typical what you'd see of as a hate crime. But it's number three that Klinkhart says is the most likely scenario. Somebody close to their circle. A friend, an associate, or perhaps a neighbor. Someone close to them. And based on everything we've talked about, not only looking at raw footage, um, going out to the scene, mm -hmm. talking to the victims, talking to witnesses, everything from the writing on the car, where the writing was, the type of paint used, mm -hmm. the color, the words that were used, where the words were located. We looked at the tires, whether they were deflated, in which they were, whether they were cut or not cut, the time of the day, all of this stuff and more we looked at. I, I believe, my opinion is that what we're looking at is number three. As for Mohammed and his roommates, they're still grateful to be here. Not only this community, but the whole country is a great to live. Mohammed and his roommates are now looking for a new apartment and hope to move by the end of the month. APD says this is an ongoing investigation.